Good evening and welcome you to Portageville, Missouri to the Big Reeves Athletics Field where the Portageville Bulldogs will be hosting the Thayer Bobcats and uh, district football game tonight. Uh, Portageville comes in with a two and seven, or excuse me, two and six record, I believe. Uh, Thayer lost, I believe it's Just one two game. Two games. They lost to Ava and um, Mountain View Liberty, yeah. which is two tough games for them. You know, Ava, uh, they turned the ball over in the fourth quarter, ended up losing that game. It's a real tight game. So they played really tough football this year. Yeah. So there, there's a very well-rounded football team, Mike. You know, here we are in week nine. And the Bulldogs are sitting in a position where you really don't want to be with just two wins. But we're in district play now. We went over to Kabul last week and had problems at, at Kabul. And we ended up losing, you know, by 31 points. It's 41-10. And really had a lot of uh, younger players make some mistakes. End up really taking us out of the game early. And it wasn't very competitive. So we hope tonight that the Bulldog team will show up and play really good. But we know that they're going to have their hands full tonight with their. You're exactly right, Rondy. Uh Last week was a disappointment for the Bulldogs. Uh, they came back home and had a good week's practice. Uh, they know what they've got ahead of them tonight as uh, Thayer won their first district game against Haytai 39-12. to And Haytai's a good ball club, and we've got them next week. Um, but it's it's crunch time. I mean, That's you right. Know You're right. This, this time of season, you know, injuries, kids, most kids are playing with injury stuff, and all the teams have the same problem to overcome. But, you know, that, that there showed how strong they are when they beat Haytai by the points they did. You know, that there has handled Salem, which Salem handled Kabul. And Kabul ends up beating us 31. They beat Salem by seven. And you can start comparing what uh, Thayer has done. It puts them, uh, really, with the 31, the other 22 points they scored on other opponents, puts them like a 53 point ahead of us. Then you take Haytai, which we compare what they played this year and what we played, and look at those points. You know, it puts at, uh, Haytai at 22.4 points average per game better than us and then Thayer goes over and handles like they did you know so it shows you right there that uh boys gonna have a lot of work tonight yeah well and Thayer they're uh they've got a rough schedule all season long they've got Mountain View Liberty Ava uh, Willow Springs uh some really big schools and I mean they play talent all year long and uh um, that's right you know and, and Thayer's done er very good in this district every year they've won it last year and a turnaround, it looks like, you know, they've got a good chance of winning it this year. They're ranked number eighth in the state uh, in 1A, Class 1A. So we're going to look for them to come out tonight and really do some positive things for their team. We just hope that the Bulldogs can be competitive and kind of stop the overwhelming push that uh, Thayer's going to put on the Bulldogs right off the bat. I mean, they're going to come and just try to run over us, and we're going to have to try to stop that. they got a really big kid. He's a good athlete, and he's ranked in the top 100 in the state. Right. Well, you know, and they would do a whole lot for the Bulldogs' confidence if they can just stick with their game plan tonight and then execute and go into Haytown next week. And uh, this program has still got some rebuilding to do, And um, but they've got a lot of heart. They never give up. That's right. They, they do not quit, and uh, that's that's worth a whole lot, you know. And in the end, it's going to get them somewhere. Uh, but it's a beautiful night here. We've got a beautiful field to play on. Uh, the stands are filling up, and it's uh, Friday night football all over the heartland. It's a nice, cool night, so the players should stay refreshed. Shouldn't have some of the cramping problems we had earlier in the season. The kids are really in good shape now and ready to play some ball. So, like I said, we'll see what happens the first quarter. Hopefully, Portsville will come out and make a stand. You know, Thayer's known for their defense, but their offense is pretty strong, too. Like I said, you know, Jeremy... Uh, Cabrellas, he's an excellent kid. I mean, strong runner, hard to take down. And then they got several big kids on the line. They're going to run run behind. So he'll be running behind them. And sometimes they'll take the tackle and guard and swing them over and run on the other weak side, same right. ones. Yeah, I actually heard through an acquaintance uh, that that young man you're speaking of, Mr. Cabrellas, um, they have what they call a blue-gray team in the state of Missouri. There's 40,000 kids eligible they take 9,000, which is just it's, it's just a, a pride deal. They don't play a game or anything, but he's actually on that team. Um, so he's probably going to be something that other than L.B. Fonda maybe yeah. or uh, 
you know, that the Bulldogs saw early, this this is probably going to be about a quality of running back as they've seen since game one of the season. That's right. It's, it's going to take gang tackling to bring him down. You're just not going to be able to put an arm on him get down. You're going to have to get down and hit, hit him low to take him down. Right. Well, and the scouting report on Thayer's defense is they swarm the ball. There's, there'll be eight of them on every tackle. We'll be back for the coin toss. People come from everywhere to get their deal from Lincoln Lacey. They come from Pitt, Bloomfield, Orrin, from New Madrid, Bertrand, Campbell, Parma, Kelso, Lilburn, Portageville, Risco, Bernie. Lincoln Lacey is your domestic auto needs headquarters. From Rector, Arkansas, Gideon, Sykes, Head in Arkansas, Morehouse, Dexter, Minor, East Prairie, Charleston, Chappie, Holland, Arkansas. Come on out to Lincoln Lacey in Malden. All right, we welcome you back to the Vic Reeves Athletic Field here in Portageville, Missouri, where the Portageville Bulldogs are hosting the Thayer Bobcats. And we're at the coin toss at midfield. Captains for the Bulldogs are number 52, Shay Rudd. Number one, Jansen Darst. Uh, can you give me a name on number 36 and 38, the uh, Hunter Ivy? Okay, excuse Eric, me, 38. 72. Very good. Hey, what we want to talk about now is the Bulldog Foundation has supplied meals for both teams. You know, travel travel time from there is at least three hours here to the school, so it's going to be late. They got back. We went to Kabul, and it, well, I got in at uh, 1.38 is what time I got home. So right. instead of these kids leaving the field here in Porterville hungry, uh, Bulldog Foundation has purchased 250 barbecues and chips and sodas for the, not only their team, Fair, we'll their cheerleaders the and contest. coaches, and the Porterville football players and cheerleaders right i mean this is a good part foundation because everything that's donated there is tax-free this is love right. and, I and other uh, businesses in town that right. help support the bulldog foundation so right. big shout out to them for yeah. stepping up to take yeah. care of that yeah kudos to the school for supplying the cafeteria and uh, uh the dwellings we can use and uh but yeah that's a really good deal i mean you hate sending those kids hungry i mean they're uh there are at least the Popper Bluff, and yeah. the route they take home, they got to go back up into Popper Bluff, and you know those kids want to get home, so uh, it's a really good deal. Yeah, we want to get home safe, too. We'd like to send a shout-out to our sponsors, Crop Production Services, one of the largest distribution network of agriculture products and services in southeast Missouri. CPS provides services including soil sampling and mapping, Fall fertilizer and lime, custom application services, wheat seed, chemicals, Dynagro seed, and LPI nutritional products. Crop Production Services has a knowledgeable staff providing agronomic solutions. For all your remaining fall needs or to plan your spring, see Crop Production Services. Mr. Rodney, how'd we wind up on the coin toss? Portageville going to kick it to Thayer? That's correct. Portageville will be kicking to the west. They will be going to the east if you're not familiar with the, the football field here at Portageville. And here we are almost November, and that football field still looks great. Yes, it does. You know, put 12 minutes on the clock, and we're ready to get started. Frederico Walton set to kick for the Bulldogs. Frederico Walton will do the kicking. Kick. It'll be picked up by the Bobcats at about the 20. They're up around the right side. He's around the right side, and he's going to get it out to about the 42 before he's brought down. By Denzel Simmons, number, number 28. Denzel Simmons on the stop. For the Bobcats. So the Bobcats will take over first down and 10 Simmons. on about the 42-yard line. The first and 10 Bobcats at their own 43-yard line. Well, Mr. Rodney, you know, there's some nervous young men out there on both sides, and uh, hopefully they'll get the butterflies worked out, and we'll be in for a good night of football. There it comes to the line. Quarterback under center, and he's going to hand it right up. It's the a fumble on the ground. Fumble. fumble, let's see what we've got. Looks like the Thayer player was able to fall on it, number 17. Fumble on the play, recovered by the Bobcats. But a good stop by the Bulldogs. Brandon Childers for Thayer recovers that. It looked like a mishandoff from the quarterback. 
to well, the back. That's, that's like we talked about. They get those butterflies worked out and play some football. Still ended up gaining about two yards out of it. It was there for the taking for just a little bit. Two back set. He's back to pass, and he's got a man open, number 46, and it is. It's complete. Be enough for a first down, a gain of about to 20. Number 45, Bill and Dennis for the Bobcats. That's Bill and Dennis on the down. catch for the Bobcats. Has a nice quick pass. And the receiver had good coverage. The quarterback just put it right where he needed to. Yeah, he did. He just had the inside on the defender, and the quarterback laid it right in there. Brandon Childers, number 37, is his first-year quarterback in part there, and they said he's done a really good job this year. 37 children, he comes under center, he'll hand it off the right side. He's around the right side, he's still on his feet, still on his feet before he's brought down with another first down for the Bobcats. So the Bobcats on the move here, early going. Number 33, Connor Bear carried, carried the ball for there. Look there, they're going to show the Bulldogs a little bit of everything here in his first possession, a little run, a little pass. Now it looked like a hold on the outside out there that the officials didn't call. It sure looked like he had a lot of room out there, so let's see what they got dialed up here. To come up the I formation. Fielder's under center. And he's going to pitch it around the right side, and he cuts it back up the middle, still on his feet. And it's a touchdown, touchdown there. So five plays, and the Thayer Bobcats strike pay dirt against the Bulldogs. Connor Blair looked like he broke, uh, Blair broke uh, three tackles, and the last one when he got tackled, he was already yeah. past the goal. Yeah, it looked goal like line. some poor tackling by the Bulldogs, and but it looked like also some good blocking by the Bobcats. So he's got a different style formation as they'll line up to the left and bring it back to center to attempt the PAT. Snap, place, kick, and it's good. So with a minute and 12 Extra seconds off the clock. Looked like it was all six far six left the there, Box. That's not going to count. So okay. Six. But there are still strikes here with just a minute, 14 seconds. They're already on the board with six points. So this is the big, strong play we was talking going to come from there. Yeah. Once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors. If you take a nice look at the field tonight, you should be impressed that it's great condition thanks to Turf Renovations. Turf Renovations is responsible for outstanding field services on not only this field, but numerous ones in the area, such as Dexter, Sykeston, Piggott, and area baseball fields as well. Turf Renovation prides themselves on providing the best playing services possible for the area's athletes. Special thanks to Turf Renovations and to check out their projects, go to turfrenovations.com. So we're back to action. The Bulldogs will send number 23, Dominic Walker, back deep. Looks like number 36 will be doing the kicking for the Bobcats. Well, this is one thing that uh, other teams have done to Portsmouth all year, except about the first two games. Yeah. Uh, kicking the ball deep. Looks like he's way he's got it laid up on the T here that they're going to just try to make it a little squib and not kick it back deep to Mr. Walker. Well, now they're going to tee it up and uh, attempt to tee it up. and well, Let's see what they're going to throw at them. There's the kick. And looks like we've got a flag. Look like there, crossed before the kick. Yeah. Illegal sure. procedure against uh, Thayer. Illegal, illegal, illegal procedure. Against I'm sure the, the Bulldogs will take all the field position they can get here. We've yet to see what kind of defense the Bobcats will put up. But uh, they'll back them up five, so make a free kick. So this should give a chance for Dominique to back up a little bit. He's seen how strong yeah. a leg that the kicker for Thayer had. That's a good observation. <laughs> it really is. I never thought of that. That's why I call him the guru. 
and don't tell them what he calls me for the night's over, folks. Be we hope you enjoy this broadcast on YHCTV. We enjoy bringing it to you. Try to make it as fun for you and as uh, help some of you folks out that are a little bit green on football, help you out with some how things go, and uh, nonetheless, we hope you enjoy it. Thanks to Mr. Tyler Wagner for bringing us some TV over to Portisville. There's the kick, and it's just about like the last one. Dominique Walker will take it about the 10. He comes up the right side, stutter steps, and he cuts it back up toward the middle. He's going to be brought down about the 30, so return of about 10 on the plate. It's a good tackle by Jordan Reed there. Nice run by Dominique. Well, let's see what the Bulldog offense has dialed up for these. First and 10, Bulldogs on the 32-yard line. Bulldogs will have a first and 10 at the 32. The officials will put the ball in play. Looks like they've got uh, Dominic Walker, I guess. Uh, Mr. Rodney, Daniel Allen's still out this week, I guess, with that bum shoulder. So Yeah, he may be out for the year. Yeah. Looks like Dominic Walker will be carrying the load. So, Nonetheless, Bryce Wallace in the shotgun. He's looking out to his left at Dominic Walker. The pass is complete. Dominic Walker around the left side. Dominic Walker still on his feet. And he'll get it up to about close to the 40, about uh, eight yards on the play. Nice run. He ended up breaking one tackle. And uh, Fair was able to shift over to the other side. Finally cut the corner off on him. Looks like once again, the Bulldogs will go from the shotgun. And Bryce Wallace calling out the play. He looks to his right, and the pass dropped. Dropped the Ben Story. Ben Story looked like he was going to take off with it for the Pass intended for 12. Ben Story is incomplete. Ran into some of the third player three faithfuls three down before the game, and they said that uh, if we've got any kind of passing game, it is possible to pick them apart because they just don't defend the short pass very well. So, uh, well, that, that's from the area of state they come from over. Uh, they line up, just try to run over each yeah. other. They're still playing that old school uh, smash old mouth school football. Smash mouth. Bryce Where else trying to play to spread. Right. Pass complete to Dominique Walker. He breaks one tackle. There should be a horse there, collar there on that is. play there. That's going to be a automatic first down for the Bulldogs as Dominique Walker had enough for it anyway. So. Yeah, should be a horse collar for uh, one there. There's a flag. That's what, exactly what they're going to call. Horse, horse collar against the Bobcats. Tell you what, it's early, but the Bulldog offense looks a whole lot sharper early going than they did last week at Kabul, so who knows what might be in store for tonight. It's going to be a walk-off of 15 yards. Of the Bulldogs going to move it across the midfield into their territory. First and 10, Bullsville at the 44-yard line. Costly penalty there for the Bobcats. It had me worried there for a minute. I didn't think they was going to call it. It was kind of late on the yeah. play, but it was obvious what he done. Yeah. Wallace from the shotgun. Dominique Walker, the long back. He goes in motion. Wallace is back to pass, and he throws it out of bounds. Excellent job. The number 18, quarterback getting rid of the ball, still taking that side. Yes, it was. Complete. Make sure he gets it out of bounds. Bring up a second down and 10 for the Bulldogs from the third 44. Derek Craig, number 34, had good pressure on Wallace, making him throw the ball early. You know, with that offensive line for the Bulldogs can, can hold her blocks and uh, give him time. As Wallace once again back to pass, and it's complete to Denzel Simmons. He's going to lunge forward for just a couple of yards. Pass complete. He's bring up about a third Denzel down. And see what they spotted it about a third and eight. For the Bulldogs. Okay, uh, we got nine later, minutes and 31 seconds still in the first quarter. Wallace from the shotgun. He's going to hand it off to Dominic Walker up around the right side. Dominic Walker still on his feet, and he powers forward. For it looks like it might be enough for a first down for the Bulldogs. Nice it's run by Dominic. Off. Yes, it was. Walker up the middle. Looks like this pace of uh, what Porzo was playing may have there confused a little bit. Right. Looks like it's going to be a fourth and one for the Bulldogs there in four down territory. And we looks like we've got encroachment against the Wildcats. Or excuse me, the Bobcats. So let's see. 45. Well, he was in a hurry. 
Off sides against the Bobcats. Well, that'll keep the drive alive for the Bulldogs. That's one of them mental mistakes that hurt you. Not a physical mistake, but a mental yes, mistake run across the snap. Yes, it does. Well, and what you like to see is just letting that defense rest, something they weren't able to do is Wallace. He's coming around the right side, and he's going to be dropped for a big loss. 16 loss on the quarterback. Team. By number 46. Number, number 34. Dylan Dennis for the Wildcats. But as I was saying, it's given that the Bulldog defense a little Blaine breather after that opening drive. For the Bulldogs. To Bull, the, the defense just never got to get off the field, and they were winded. And uh, so as long as they can keep this drive alive, the better for the Bulldogs. Wallace back to pass. He's looking across. He's the wide open. It's incomplete. Jansen Doris is wide open. Just a uh, little come up a little bit short. You're right. You right there just showed a weakness on Thayer's part. Uh, Jansen was able to get distance from the guy trying to cover him. It was open. He just couldn't get enough on the pass to get there. Yeah. It'll bring up a third and 15 for the Bulldogs with 8:22 here in the opening quarter. Wallace from the shotgun. Got plenty of time. He's looking across the middle. And it is complete, but I think he, he dropped it. He fumbled it. Not fumbled. It was in, be called incomplete. Nonetheless, it was still a good pass. Just wasn't able to make the connection. Looked like he had it for just a second. Number 32 yeah. stripped it out. He was well defended. To bring out fourth and long. Fourth was going to go for, for it. Bulldogs. Wallace from the shotgun. And we've got movement. Looks like it's going to be against the Bobcats. That'll cut off some of that yardage. All sides. The Bulldogs are in four down territory. So. It'll make it fourth and ten. It cut, cut it by a third anyway. So this is, you know, Dead possible to make a pass here to get that. Five yards. It brings up fourth and ten for the Bulldogs. Fourth and ten for the third, 34. So. Wallace from the shotgun. Walker the long back. Like Wallace going to change the play. Ten seconds on the play, go up. Wallace back pass. Trump take. He's up the right sideline, and it's long and, and out, of out of bounds. As they got some pressure on him back in the backfield, so the Bulldogs will turn it over on down. They had, had some good rhythm in the drive going there. Uh, Horsley looked pretty good. I mean, even though they didn't yeah, they did. Play, but I mean, they got the ball moved. The big penalty on there for the horse collar. Yeah, they did the, the the short pass and a few runs by the by Dominique, but uh, when they were forced to you know to air it out on the third and fifteen, they just weren't able to connect. So, nonetheless, we need to see if we can't get this bulldog defense fired up and uh, get a stop in there and get that offense back on the field while we got some good field position here. The pitch around the right side, and he's got room out on that right side and got some blockers he's brought down after a gain of about five. 36. Like Dominique Walker on the tackle. That's a good tackle. Carrier. Dominique just brought down the big fellow for Thayer. Dominique That's Walker for sure. Looks like Thayer really getting some good blocking yeah, on that outside. Looks like they got a good patient pass. back, and he's waiting on those blocks. So. Snap, he's around the right side, and boy, he's met hard after a gain of a, we'll call it maybe a yard. So, bring up a third down and four. Good defense there by the Bulldogs. Excellent defense. Looks like we got a lot more size on the defense this, this game than we had last yeah, game. We waited yeah. too late in the game to make that change. We got coaches already prepared to get for putting a lot of heavy kids in the middle here. To yeah. Try to, Stop that run. Well, and I think early on the players noticed it because they're trying to run to the ball to the outside. As here they go that outside once again. And he's got some room, and he's down that sideline. He steps out of bounds. But after, not to, before he gets across the first down marker. Connor Blair, number 33. Gain of about 12 on the play. But he gets him up for the first down. First and 10. Six minutes and 57 seconds here in the opening quarter. It uh, doesn't look like Thayer's thinking too much about change. They keep continuing running to the right side there. Yeah, Portisville's going to have to figure Time out something because they are utilizing that right side. 
We'll be right back. You're watching Bulldog Football on YHCTV. First Midwest Bank Gold Club offers special privileges for our friends who are age 50 or better and have combined deposits of $5,000. Members enjoy trips, cruises, seminars, and picnics along with free personalized bank services. Upcoming trips include Journey Through the Holy Land, Yellowstone in Winter, Classic Ireland, and Hawaiian Paradise Cruise. Stop by any First Midwest Bank location to sign up for the Gold Club. It's absolutely free. First Midwest Bank, providing common sense financial solutions every day. NFL Red Zone, the channel that brings you every touchdown from every game on Sunday afternoons. Watch the most exciting moments like never before, live in HD. Every touchdown from every game, live on one channel, NFL Red Zone. We welcome you back to the Vic Reeves Athletic Field. Uh, Thayer Bobcats will bring it up to the line. First and 10 from the 45, and he's going to hand it off straight up the middle. And he's still on his feet. Down the right side, one man to beat. And he's brought down after a huge gain of about 30. Wow, it shows that the coach of uh, Thayer is using that Connor Blair and ain't even using his main guy. Right. He's, he's looking for speed, what he sees yeah. in the power game. And how many times he run to that side? We got a six minute, 50 seconds first quarter. Yeah. And he continues runs to a strong side. Yeah, Thayer's definitely found a weakness on that right side of that defense because they're exploiting it. I don't know. Let's see if the Bulldogs are going to be able to stop him. He's back to pass, looking. He airs it out, and it's caught. Touchdown, Thayer. Pass complete to number 17, Austin Henry. Touchdown Austin Henry with there. it. Austin Henry on the catch. So, with six minutes, 43 seconds, Thayer Bobcats lead the Portageville Bulldogs 12-0. So, just when you think they're going to use the run to beat you, they air <laughs> one out. They'll once again, use that offset kick formation. Everybody will line up left, and then it looks like they're, I don't know. They're not going to get anything they're on that. not going to get anything there. It looked like it was trying a little trickery, baby. So the Bulldogs it's are holding them to 12 nothing no here. Good. He's trying to After get back on that big field goal. Yeah. And they didn't trick nobody but themselves on that one. Yeah. Once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors for making this broadcast possible. We'd like to thank Miss Virginia Hitchcock down at Western Auto on Main Street in Portageville for sponsoring tonight's game. She's been serving area residents for many years with appliances, TVs, hardware, household essentials are provided at Western Auto with great customer service. Also, service is given for all products. Give them a call at 300 East Main in Portageville or call 379-3821. If you need some auto parts, stop by Delta Auto Parts and Salvage on Highway 61 North in Portageville. They specialize in domestic car and light truck parts. Go to DeltaAutoParts.com for parts information. We come back to action. The Bobcats will once again kick off to the Bulldogs. Bulldogs in a 12 nothing hole here halfway through this first quarter. So they need a, some kind of spark. They had a good opening drive. It just sputtered out on them. So let's see what they can do in this second go at it here. They will break out of the huddle. Looks like he'll tee it up for a deep kick. Like the kickers sending out some instructions. Oh, and they caught them, and don't, if Portageville doesn't touch it, it's going to be a legal procedure. That ball didn't go 10 yards. I don't believe did it. No, it didn't. But we'll take over. So back back-to-back -back mishaps for the kicking game for Thayer is left Portageville good field position, but Portageville 
just yet able to capitalize on it. So at the fair 47 yard line. Yeah, I mean you had to stand there and ask why. You know, they try to run a trick play down here at the goal line. I mean they're scored fairly easy the first two yeah. drives, and then yeah. now they try this at the kickoff. Yeah. So kind of wonder what's going on with that. But. Well, it, it only helps, you know, maybe the Bulldogs can make a play. We'll just see as they're going to hand off to Dominique Walker. Dominic Walker around the right side. He breaks the tackle, but he's met at the line of scrimmage as he strings it out to the right. No gain on the play. Loss of, Loss of a couple. 34, Derek Craig, and a host of Bobcats were there to help. Just wasn't able to get much Lost blocking as that Thayer defense is swarming to the ball. Lines. Bryce Wallace once again from the shotgun. He's looking to his right and he's across the middle. And a pass complete to Hunter Cook. And Hunter Cook is going to take it across pass the 40. Looks like he's got first down yardage. He's going to be close. We'll see if they're going to take a measure. Bryce Wallace. And third down, it looks like about a half a yard. Third down and one for the Bulldogs. Big, big third down. Bryce Wallace from the shotgun. Looks like he's going to change the play. And they'll hand it off to Dominique Walker, and Dominique Walker breaks the first tackle. Dominique Walker still on his feet as he gets the first down, and he'll pick up about seven on the play. Good aggressive running by Dominique Walker. Dominique showing some power in those legs. He broke through two tackles and was able to get a hold up there at the end, pull him down, but not until he get the first down. Wallace once again from the shotgun. Dominique Walker long back. Wallace back to pass. He's looking across the middle and the pass and it's dropped. Right into the hands of Jans and Darce, but he wasn't able to hold on to it. It was an excellent job that you seen Bryce leave the pocket away from pressure because the, the pocket was collapsing in on him, and then he backs away, and Shea Rudd was able to catch up with the defender and push him out of the way yeah. and give him enough time to throw the ball, right. and which was an excellent pass. I mean, he was there. Bryce Wallace once again from the shotgun. Oh, and he fumbles the ball, but he picks it up. He's... Looking for an open receiver, and the pass is tipped, and it's caught by Hunter Cook. It's not going to be a big game, but it kept the play alive. As it looked like Wallace may have been going to take a sack in the backfield for a big loss after the bad, or the, the fumbled pass snap. Wow, that'd make Hunter the top Cook. ten for sure. Getting one hand up there and tipping it back to yourself. Yeah, yeah, he got me all excited. I thought it was going to be a touchdown. We just back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> oh man, you got to stay positive. Yep. Once again, Wallace from the shotgun. Three wide outs to the right. He's going to look over to the sideline. The play changes. Once, once again, the, the Bulldogs are driving and deep into Thayer territory, so let's see what they can produce on this drive. It looks like they're going to let the clock run down and it looks like out. the Bulldogs will take a timeout. Timeout, Portisville. We're going to take a timeout. And you're watching YHC TV. Hello, I'm Dr. Terry Swinger, and I'm so pleased that YHCTV will be carrying so many sporting events this year, both boys and girls. These events help with leadership, uh, personality development, and I would like to wish all of our students and all of our schools a safe and successful year. We know you have many choices in automobile dealerships, but at Glen Sane, our customers are special. We want you to understand that we're always working very hard to please our customers. We have a great selection to choose from, and with the 0% and the rebates and our prices at Glen Sane, it's a great time to buy. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glen Sane. We want you to come see us, and God bless our troops. We welcome you back to the Big Rees Athletic Field here in Portisville as the Portisville Bulldogs trail the Thayer Bobcats 12-0. With 4.32 left here in this opening quarter, and the Bulldogs are driving deep into Thayer territory. It's a third down, big play here, so we'll see what the Bulldogs are going to do. After a timeout, and they talk it over. Wallace leads his troops back out from the shotgun, and Wallace is going to keep it himself, and he's met at the line of scrimmage by a host of Bobcats. Shelby Bart, number 25, got into the backfield. Yeah, just wasn't much there. It looked like he hesitated on that first initial move forward. And 
And Thayer just blew right through there. So it'll bring up a fourth down and eight for the Bulldogs once again there. Looking to keep the drive alive as they draw those receivers in tight. Playcock winding down. Wallace is back to pass, and he's under pressure. He loads the pressure. He's looking out to his left, and the pass is batted away. Number 25 again. 25. So Bart, once again, the Bobcats will take over on downs in their own territory. At their own 28-yard line. Be first and 10 from their own 28. Well, two drives of stall for them, but uh, at least they're making Thayer go the distance. They're not, uh, Portageville able to move the ball, but just not able to convert, convert on those third and fourth downs. They show there's open receivers. I mean, it's just, yeah. you know, we've got to contain the pressure from the defense, and the right. receivers are open just to make a good pass. So yeah. a lot of stuff going on. we maybe figure it out here in a little bit. The pitch is going to like come up that left side after a big gain of about 10. So. Number this Bulldog defense just having fits with this running game with Thayer, picking up 10 yards a pop. Well, it looks like Connor Blair is going to carry the load for uh, Thayer number tonight. Yeah. Because they're consistently Davis handing off to him. I guess Coach said, we're going, you're going to be our go-to yeah. guy. Yeah. He's got a quick first step off that, coming out of that backfield. He's got a good burst up in there. So the Bulldog is going to have to dial something up. He's number seven, back to pass. He's looking out to his left as he's under pressure. And the Bulldogs, is, and the pass is complete, but he was down on a knee, so they're going to get it back pretty close to the original line of scrimmage. So good, good. pursuit by the Bulldogs. Was very good. Yeah, it looked like from here his knee was down, and it took a little bit for them to blow the whip yeah. out. Yeah, complete to 36. Cabrales, his knee was down. Brings up bring up a second down and 10 for the Bobcats. Number seven, he's back. Oh, and it's a handoff. Blair. And Blair, he's up the right side. One man to beat, and he beat him. Run a little counter there. On a 65-yard scamper, the Thayer Bobcats once again strike pay dirt. They're just absolutely just running it right at the Bulldogs. And thus far, just not... Don't have anything for them. Yeah, they score again in this third score with two minutes and 48 seconds first quarter. So, you know, this is just how we talk for the game. Yeah. They're they're powerful running team, and yeah, we're going to have problems stopping them. They're going to line up for the two-point conversion. He's rolling out to his right, and he's going to walk right in. So the two-point conversion is good two with two minutes, 48 seconds back. left here in the first quarter of the – Thayer Bobcats lead the Portageville Bulldogs 18 to zero. We'd like to send a shout out to our sponsors, Mr. James Deere Dentistry at 205 East 4th Street here in Portageville. Dr. Deere has been serving Portageville and the surrounding area since 1995 and has a newly remodeled facility. All porcelain crown and bridge work is metal free and tooth color composite fillings are now available. Dr. Deere's offer Dr. Deer's office offers payment options through care credit for patients to finance treatment. To schedule an appointment, call 573-379-5407. Ag Distributors in Portageville are located south of Portageville on Highway T. The 780i agronomy locations offer seed, fertilizer, crop production, protection services, and custom application services. And stop by the Portageville Farm and Home Hardware Store for a large selection of home, lawn, and garden supplies, hardware, and clothing. Go to adiagronomy.com or call 379-3816. Uh, we're back to action as once again the Bayer Bobcats will kick it off to the Portageville Bulldogs. Well, you have to be cliche about it, but this is gut check time. You know when uh, they brought in Mitch Weber to run that two-point conversion, he went untouched. You know, Coach brought, Jones brought him over the sideline and had talk with him right there yeah. quick, you know, like, hey, boys, keep your head up. And it looks like another onside kick. Once again, we've got a, it looks like a illegal procedure. There's something going on here with the, uh, with the kick. 
see what the officials call here. They're going to tee her back up. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, it's got to, what, what's tough for the Bulldogs is they're moving the ball defensively. They're stalling on third and fourth down. They're just not able to convert. There is no play um, on the play. You know, but they have been able to move the ball twice, both positions, into their territory. But when Thayer gets the ball, they're just running it at will. So the Bulldogs are going to have to dial up some type of defense to slow that down. Um, and uh, We don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, what we've, uh, well, good thing about it, we've still got three quarters to figure it out. I hope it's a good thing. Not really sure what our uh, procedure was there, but nonetheless, Thayer's going to line it up and kick it again. The Bulldogs need to be on their toes for this onside kick. He's going to send it deep back to Dominique Walker. He'll take it at about the five. He's going to bring it up the middle. And Dominic walks still on his feet. He goes around the left side. And he's going to reverse it back to the right. And he cuts it back up midfield. He's still on his feet. After a, a lot of running for a gain of about, run back of about 15, the Bulldogs will take over first and 10 from about the 20 yard line. The Bulldogs not with as good a starting position, field position as they had this time. Maybe that's what they need, just to get a good long drive out, sustained drive, give that defense a little bit of time to regroup, and get their thoughts collected, and get back into this ball game with Bryce Wallace from the shotgun. He's looking to pass, looking to his right, and he's going to air it out out the middle, and it's intercepted at midfield. And number 20 for number 20. So as we talked about that defense, just absolutely no time to to get rested. And well, I mean, he had good good protection first on that pass, and then he, and he threw in the double coverage. Uh, yeah. The guy wasn't open. Right. So, I mean, you know, well, and it's still against those kind of odds. You're looking for intercession. I mean, right. Yeah. Five turnovers last game that position in teams like this at this caliber, you cannot just throw the ball up. Right. Well, and it's been the ammo for the Bulldogs all year. I mean, the short pass has been very, very effective, but it seems like when they have to go deep, it just uh, passes just aren't consistent. And so Thayer is going to line it up, and they're going to go right off tackle, and they fumbled. So let's see. The Bulldogs fumbled in desperate the need of a break here. Childers fumbled, fumbled the ball on the handoff there. It looked like the Bobcats were able to get back on top of it. Yeah, Mike on offense, you know, I mean, we, that made number 18 interception for this year yeah. from the quarterback position. And uh, guarantee is 16 of the 18. 16 of the long, deep ball. Long yeah. passes. Yeah. But a lot of that has to do with just, just, just not having a real, real good running game to set up that short pass for the. They're going to hand it off right up the right side. And, uh, hand off 36 to Rallis up the middle. He's going to pick up, looks like about three or four on the play. Looks like going to that power game, big 36, the one yeah. we talked about for the game. Yeah, Bulldogs in desperate need. I think a, a, a stop and a, and a turnover, a punt, forced there to punt would do a lot of, for that uh, uh, Bulldog defense for their confidence. Uh, they spent a lot of playing time on that field in this first quarter. Looks like a pass. A pass. And he looks to his left, and it's batted away. Very good defended by Porsville. Yes, it was. I believe that uh, A.B. Banks, maybe. A.B. Banks got a hand on yes, it. Excellent indeed. job. Even though the receiver's behind him, he still got Yes, it was, because that receiver had a step or two on him. Yeah, he got a hand on that ball. So yeah. Let's see what Thayer's going to do if they're going to punt. It's one of the first fourth downs that Thayer's face, so the Bulldogs uh, – Finally able to stop one of those drives. Let's see. Looks like they're shouting. The Bulldogs probably better look for. Oh, this, he's lining up from the shotgun for a pass. And he's going to air it out deep, and it's incomplete. So the Bulldogs will take over right about midfield. So that interception costly, but not too costly for the Bulldogs. So maybe they'll uh, they got a ball right about where they had it. When they threw the interception, so. Well, we got a minute and nine seconds left on the first quarter, and that was the first stop yeah. by the defense. Yeah. So, good job. Good kudos like there. Said, it's kudos. It's got to be big for the confidence. Yeah. It's like you're, you're stopping a number eight ranked team in the state. Yeah. 
Uh, confidence is key for these guys. As Wallace from the shotgun, he's going to hand it off to Dominique Walker. And boy, there's just nothing. There is good aggressive running. Going to collect Mr. Walker a couple of yards on the play. So. A couple on the play, lands up second down. He was contacted in the backfield and still ended up getting three or four yeah. yards out of him. So that's a yeah. good job of Dominique. Keep his legs balls. moving. Yeah. Once again, Wallace from the shotgun, he's going to hand it off to Denzel Simmons up the right side. He's going to pick up a couple of three yards. Going to bring it in to probably going to be about a third and two. Maybe for the Bulldogs here. Doesn't look like a very good spot. Maybe a third and three. Bulldog once again go to that quick no huddle as Wallace from the shotgun. Looks like one of the Thayer players jumped. And let's see if going to be offside. There, looks like they jumped. Approachment. Approachment. The so, costly penalty for the Bobcats is it'll give the Bulldogs the first down across midfield. Offside against the Bobcats. Moves the ball five yards. It's enough for a first down. First They'll down spot it at about the third 43. Like a good crowd's made it out to join us for both sides tonight. So. Wallace getting a play from the sidelines. Just going to let the clock look, run out, looks like. In fact, they'll do that. To, that's going to end the first quarter as the Thayer Bobcats lead the Portisville Bulldogs 20-0. We're going to take a break. You're watching Bulldog Football on YHCTV. At Allen Christian and Dexter, you'll like the way we do business for many reasons. We make the buying experience simple with a large selection of Buicks and GMCs to choose from. We offer quality pre-owned vehicles priced to fit any budget. No gimmicks, guaranteed. Shop us any day, anytime here in Dexter or online at allenchristian.com. We service what we sell with one of the most experienced service departments in the Heartland area. Selection, price, experience, family owned for over 53 years. Allen Christian, Buick, GMC, Dexter. Welcome to NFL Total Access. The show that takes you inside the locker room and down on the field. That's where, that's where, that's with inside access to all 32 teams all year long. NFL Total Access, Monday through Saturday, only on NFL Network. NFL Network, where football season never ends. We welcome you back to the Vic Reeves Athletic Field here in Portageville, Missouri. As the Portageville Bulldogs have a first and ten. As Wallace going to hand it to number 22, Dominic Walker. He breaks a couple tackles. He's still on his feet. And he'll get it right back about to the original line of scrimmage. Bring up a second down and ten for the Bulldogs. It just doesn't look like the Bulldogs are getting much perimeter blocking out there. Once Dominic gets outside, there's just nowhere to go with it. Well, Nate Chandler, he, he was trying to uh, block there, and like those guys just pretty fast. Yeah. Well, it's back to pass, and the pass is There's going to be a flag on that. There's going to be a pass interference. Number 20 was all over. Number 28, Denzel Simmons for the Bulldogs. So. Pass interference against the Bobcats. They look like the Bulldogs keeping their composure, running their routes, and uh, they are just handing them a few out here. So hopefully it'll give the Bulldogs that spark they need. Well, the their defender just got a little bit too anxious, couldn't get to the ball in time, so he tries yeah. to go through the receiver. Of course, going to draw the flag like every time on that. Move the chains for the Bulldogs. Yards. Wallace once again from the shotgun, number 22, Dominique Walker, flanks him to the right. And Wallace back to pass. He's under pressure, and he's going to – and the pass is complete to number one, James and Darce. He'll get it right back to about the line of scrimmage, but uh, – Gain of five yards. Gain of five, excuse me. Uh, excellent pass under pressure and way to move through the pocket. There. And Dana was. One time I thought he was going to be sacked there. So Wallace once again from the shotgun. 
Fakes the handoff to Walker. Little screen pass number one. Jansen Doris. He's going to pick up a couple on the play. Tackled by 81. Bring up a third down for the Bulldogs. Third, and we'll call it two. Bulldogs in four down territory. So Wallace once gives him a shotgun. He fakes the handoff. He's looking up the left side, and boy, there's nothing there. 18, Wallace on the quarterback keeper. Wallace up that way. Fourth, fourth and long on this one here. Well, fourth and short. He got more yards than I thought. Yeah. The fourth and one, so big, big fourth down for the Bulldogs. If they can convert this, keep this drive alive. Number 18, Wallace, in shotgun. He's going to take it up the right side, and I believe he's got the first down, looks like indeed. 18, Wallace, on the quarterback keeper. Good to piece of running. For the first down for the Bryce Wallace. Good job by the Bulldogs moving the ball. Once again, the Bulldogs have been able to move the ball, but I just can't help believe they, they, they've got to score here for nothing else more than their confidence. Just to show, say, hey, we can score against eight, this eighth-ranked team in the state. And Wallace, once again, from the shotgun. He's looking out to his right, and he looks back across the middle. He's got all day to pass, and he's looking for an open receiver, and it's batted away. Good defense by there. Yes, it was. Play took a while to develop. Um, it's like he had a couple of receivers out to his right, but that play was designed to go into the end zone and uh, bring up a second down and 10 for the Bulldogs. <laughs> After Wallace looking to pass, and the pass is caught. I believe it's caught it right near the goal line. Looks like on the one yard line, it's going to be first to go. First to go. Who was that on that catch? That was Jansen Doris. Jansen Doris, number one for the Bulldogs on the catch. So the Bulldogs deep, deep into their territory. Looked like they dropped the chain, so we know we're inside the five. Looked like right on the goal line. So four shots at it for the Bulldogs, and the handoff, and he is in. Denzel Simmons Denzel scores. Denzel Simmons, touchdown, Portageville. Wow, that's what the Bulldogs needed. Yes, it was, and, and it's a shame because they had three of those drives previously installed where they were moving the ball, and, you know, just wasn't able to convert on third and fourth down. But, you know, the thing about it, the Bulldogs haven't had to punt. They've had field position on all four positions now, so let's see what it looks like they're going to go for two. And uh, Bryce Wallace will keep it himself. And it he's in. looks like he's in. It's good. Bryce Wallace. So that'll bring it to 20 to 8. With 934, second quarter. 934. Once again, we'd like to send out a shot to our sponsor. Butler Drugstore is on Main Street in Portageville. Go down and see Mr. Trey Ron. He has got a full service pharmacy. Also including gifts and fine jewelry down at Miss Valerie Rome's little gift shop. And Mr. Trey has been serving the area for many years and provides your prescription solutions. Butler Drugstore at 222 East Main in Portageville. Call 379 5469. Ellington Insurance in Portageville for all your insurance needs. Ellington is now offering a chance to win a 25 quart Yeti Roadie Cougar. Go to their Facebook page online and like in parentheses them for a chance to win. Ellington Insurance in Portageville. Visit their website at ellingtoninsurance.com. Excellent job by the Bulldog offense there. Mike, they went to that corner early and uh, there was real good defending, but they came right back to the same spot. Ended up getting Jansen Darts right to go line. Yep. Then the rest is history. There's the kick. No squibbler is going to be picked up by the deep back from Thayer, and he's up the left side, runs into one of his own guys. He breaks one tackle, but he's going to be brought down at the, about the 40 by a host of Bulldogs. So Thayer will set up camp. First and 10 at the Portageville 40. Let's see what this Bulldog defense can do. Looks like we've got a Bulldog player down. Uh, like the coach and the trainer will be out to tend to him. I hope it's nothing serious more than a 
maybe a little stinger or cramp or something. So all the players will take a knee in respect for the dying man. And After the ball game, SCA will be hosting the annual fifth quarter in the cafeteria tonight. Can't tell who we got down there. Can you, Mr. Rodney? No, I can't. I didn't He's see been, a number on that. Been flat of his back, and uh, we just can't get a number for you folks. But uh, we'll let you know here just shortly. We know we got a lot of parents, grandparents, friends, and family out here. And, it's Ethan White, uh, number 80. He's Ethan up, White, walking. number 80. Tough kid. He's up. He's ready to go. So we hope you folks are enjoying this broadcast out here. And uh, for any of you would like a keepsake of this game or any of the games, you can contact Mr. Tyler Wagner over at YHC or at Dexter, and he can hook you up with a fine DVD of this game. I don't know about, you know, well, you'll like the commentating, but their, their graphics <laughs> and, uh, man, it's really pretty strange. All right, we're back to action. Ethan White up, and he's raring to go again. And Thayer takes over first and ten. Is the handoff around the left side, and there's nobody there. And he's got a couple to beat, and he is going to beat them. My goodness. Have you ever in your life? Connor Blair, number 33 for Thayer, does it again. Strikes from the other side. It's just uh, one play from the line of scrimmage after he's uh, taking over the ball there. So. Boy, I'm going to tell you what, I'm not going to take one thing away from Hornsville, but they are in for a long night if that continues. I mean, you're talking about five or six seconds off the clock. Uh, I mean, in, 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 in all honesty, how many minutes of possession do you think Thayer's had to put up? Not very much. Uh, 26 points in two quarters. I bet they hadn't had the ball over three minutes. There's a pitch to the left side, and he'll go in untouched. So, uh, with nine minutes, 15 seconds left here in the second quarter, the Thayer Bobcats lead the Portageville Bulldogs 28 to eight. We'd like to send a shout out to A Plus Family Clinic, one of our fine sponsors here. We thank them for uh, sponsoring the ball game tonight. A Plus Clinic has been in Portage, serving Portageville this area with medical services with great quality and service. Visit them at 203 East 3rd, or call 379-2100 for an appointment or information. A-plus Family Clinic in Portageville for local medical solutions. Crop Production Services, one of the largest distribution network of agricultural products and services in southeast Missouri. CPS provides and include soil sampling, mapping, fall fertilizer, and lime. Custom application services, wheat seed and chemical, Dynagro seed and LPI nutritional products. Crop Production Services has a knowledgeable staff providing agronomic solutions for all your remaining fall needs. Or to plan your spring, see Crop Production Services. Okay. Once again, the Thayer Bobcats will kick off to the Portageville Bulldogs and. Uh, you know, uh, well, we'll see what the offense can do. You know, they yeah. they had a good uh, drive last time. You know, but what's uh, killing us now is uh, our defense can't yeah. just can't There's, stop Connor yeah. Blair. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you say. And if they won't touch it, it'll be another. I don't really know why the Bulldogs are wanting to try to get in there on that ball, but nonetheless, they're going to get really good field position again. Uh, you know, it's a shame to have to say this, but it's good that the Port the Bulldog offense is able to stay on the field, but they're staying on it for a reason because After Thayer's scoring so quickly. It's it, just it's just making it tough. Uh, it, it, it just seems like Thayer's much. found a spot. They're getting their blocks, and there's just no resistance there from the Bulldogs. But uh, taking nothing away from that back, man, he's got a burst like we haven't seen yeah. in a good while. Wallace back to pass, and it's caught by number 28, Denzel Simmons. Good aggressive run after the catch. will get him a couple of yards. Take up Alpha for there. Made a good play on that. Let him gain much yardage after the catch. Wallace once again from the shotgun. Empty backfield. He'll throw it out to Dominique Walker. No blockers out there. He's still on his feet, and... He's going to be brought down for a big loss. Looks like he's going to lose about six yards on that pass. Yeah. Just took too long to develop. Yeah. 
Fair was really good about getting across the field, shutting that run off once he received the ball. Yeah. Bring up a third down and 14 for the Bulldogs. So. Wallace from the shotgun. Simmons in motion. He's under pressure and he's just gonna have to throw it out of bounds. He was under heavy pressure. Austin Henry for there was coming in the backfield really fast. Looked like he went unblocked. So somebody yeah. missed the man assignment there to, to block this, him. So we're at the punt. Looks like they'll send in the punt crew for the Bulldogs, number 3,800 Ivy to do the punting for the Bulldogs. So, well, so after not the a bad punt. punt. Not a bad punt. punt. By 3,800 Ivy, the ball is down by the Bulldogs. We're going to hope that the Portsville defense can stop the Bobcats here and they can put the offense back on the field. Uh, we're going to have to figure out something here. Be first yeah, they are. Uh, at their own 22 yard line. Well, if they keep running away. They run except for the last time. We'll see them coming right towards our camera. Yeah. Well, and we don't want to take anything away from that their offensive line. Evidently, they're making holes for him to run through also. Uh, you know it's got to be frustrating for the coaches and that defense to, to try to figure out how to slow this man down as he goes the same way that he did the last time. And it's looks like he fumbled the ball there A little again. bit offended. So. Yeah, it looked like the Bulldogs Fumble got it. Looks looks like the Bulldogs Three recover, so. He was trying to gain a couple extra yards and stuck that arm out there. And one of the Bulldogs reached up and just knocked yeah. the ball free. Good so, aggressive defense by the Bulldogs. Hey, so good, good job, good defense. The Bulldogs will take over with good field position. So figured out one way to keep from scoring. That's right. Take the ball. You know, and what what is re what the reality of this? If the Bulldogs can punch this thing in, you're looking at 28-16. <laughs> you know, I mean. Oh yeah. You'll never hear me quit rooting for these guys ever. Wallace is back to pass, and he's looking across the middle, and it's complete. First down yardage. Looks like number 28, Denzel Simmons. Denzel Simmons, excellent catch, excellent pass. Real quick, got out there real quick. Run a good pattern because he ran right through there. Uh, three there players. Yep. He's trying to make coverage. He's just too quick for him. So once again, and he's going to hand off to Dominic Walker, and Walker's going to go around that left side. And, boy, they're just, just nothing there tonight for – a lot of white jerseys on the tackle. Yeah, there is, and that that, that was the uh, scouting report on skate on Thayer. They can swarm the ball when they do tackle. They'll have four or five guys there on you pretty quick. So, they only got one yard out of that. Surprised they got that. Uh, bring up a second and nine for the Bulldogs with 7-16 here left in this first half. We'll see if the Bulldogs go for the same corner of the end zone. Wallace calls out the place from the shotgun. He's back looking, and... He's going to run it over toward the sideline, and he's going to be dragged out of bounds after. I don't believe he's going to get much on the play. It looks like he's not feeling too good. To get up yeah, it looked like he might have got shoved up in the fence just a little bit. Gets up limping a little bit. A pocket still had good protection on it, and I don't know yeah. why he released from it. Yeah. And, and stay in the pocket. But, you know, you got that youth. Just got to settle down and trust the blockers there on yeah. that one. Be a third and 12 for the Bulldogs. As Wallace back to pass, pump fake. He's looking and caught. Caught. But Hunter Cook. Get him back close to the line of scrimmage. Good catch. As he was well defended. The Bulldogs once again are in four down territory. He's going to bring up a fourth down and long for the Bulldogs. Hunter Cook's made two fine catches tonight. Yes, he has. He's up a fourth and nine for the Bulldogs. Maybe a good connection. There's two competitive young men right there hooking up. Wallace from the shotgun. Looks like he'll change the play. Play clock winding down to five, and it looks like Portisville is going to call a timeout. 
And we're going to take a timeout. You're watching Bulldog Football on YHC TV. The Sports Roundtable represents one of our great traditions here in Southeast Missouri and Northeast Arkansas, and that's high school athletics. And nobody promotes it better than us here at YHC. What's new with the roundtable this year, we're looking to add representatives from our local colleges, Southeast Missouri State, Arkansas State, and Three Rivers, to give us the inside scoop on local college athletics in our area. The roundtable was designed to give local viewers in-depth analysis about teams and sports in our area, and we're geared up to go once again every Saturday morning, live at 10 a.m. We welcome you back here to Portageville, Missouri. You're watching high school football on YHC TV as the Thayer Bobcats lead the Portageville Bulldogs 28-8 with 6.55. Portageville with a big fourth down and nine here. Wallace is back to pass and he's looking, nothing there, and he's gonna tuck it. And he's gonna take off, and Wallace with room. And he's going to be close Looks like he's to that got first it. down. I believe he's got it. Excellent job by Wallace. They are. They're going to, boy, that, that, that may have been the big, biggest drive of the, of the night or the biggest play of the night for the Bulldogs at this point. I have to say, the st sophomore stepped on that one. He had no fear. He took off. Looks like first and eight, so we're eight yards from score, and he's going to take it up the middle again. Wallace on the quarterback keeper. Doesn't look like much there. Levi Hargrove. Tackled on the play by number 20, Levi Hargrove. There. Come around for the side there. You want to tell you what, if the Bulldogs can punch this in, go for the convert a two point, and hold Thayer into half, huge for some confidence. Huge. As Bryce Wallace calling out to play. The snap, and he's back to pass, and it's gonna be out incomplete, of out of bounds. Jansen Doris caught the ball, but he was out of bounds when he caught it. You got to have one foot in. Third and goal from the seven for the Bulldogs. Looks like seven yards for the score here. Third, Third and down. seven for the Bulldogs. Wallace back to pass, and boy, he's just gobbled up right there in that backfield. Play took a little too long to develop, so it'll bring up a fourth down and 12 for the Bulldogs. Well, you know, their defense sent four guys in the blitz. Yeah. So fourth down, and so they decided they're going to stop that Dennis. passing. Only Had too many sacks. guys for the offensive yeah. line to cover. Well, that just when you drop back, look for the screen the pass, pitch line. it out. You got everybody blitzing, just throw it over top of the defenders. Right. Wallace will come under center. He fakes the pitch and it's a pass and it's incomplete. Intended for number one, Jansen Doris, as they tried to catch there. It looked like pass off guards maybe, one, Darcy, but uh, to no avail. So there will take over. There from their own 10 yard line. From the 10 yard line. So they're going to have to go about 90 yards. Well, there's one thing about it. when offense on the field, our offense, their offense can't score. Right. So they right. did a good job drive, drive yeah. down, you know, within 10 yards. Well, in Portageville's last two defensive stops have been a, a, a four down hold and a fumble. So maybe they're getting a little confidence built up as they're going to pitch it around that left side. And here we go again. I don't really know how to explain it to you folks, but they're running the ball off the left tackle and he's going untouched and flag on the play there's only you hope the bulldog after this one there's a flag uh, this one may come back could be an illegal block in the back um, you know, I guess maybe that, that running back could get winded and they have to rest him for a little while. My goodness. You know, he's going to have 500 yards rushing in the first half. But it just, that burst, when he hits that hole, I mean, there's nothing there. And, I mean, we got some, some quick defensive backs on here that just cannot cannot run him down. Hold it against the Bobcats. 
illegal glove in the back against the Bulldogs. Well, I tell you this much: if they hand it off, if they hand it off to him again, and he can do that again after just doing it, that boy is a stud because he got to be a little bit wind. He just ran 90 yards before I could blink. Well, he's going to sure help his numbers tonight. Yeah. You know? He got yeah. a big play there taken away from him on a penalty, so. Yeah. We'll see if the Bulldogs can regroup here and get serious. I mean, is that thing on a good team? You cannot take one play off. No. You got to be no. ready to penalties stop that off. run. To be a replay of down, be first in 10 so we had penalties against both teams. Uh, the Bulldogs did something, and Thayer did something, so right. we'll put you right in the same well, spot and start all over. And I look for Thayer to probably do the same thing on this play, and the Bulldogs have got to think, what did we do wrong on that? And, and indeed they did, and here he goes. And looks like they're going to gobble him up this time, but at not until after a gain of about 15. But uh, Fred Moore in on the tackle there. The ball yeah. You know, the they're the not hiding their hand. They're, they're showing it to them. Uh, and they know they can go to it. And up to this point, the Bulldogs are just 10, unable to find something. From their own well, like I said, you know, they're – their offensive line is doing an excellent job just making holds you can drive a truck through over there. Yeah. And their kids fast yeah. also. So well, it looks like one of the point. key defensive players, Ethan White, still on the sidelines too. And the people shook up a little bit. And, hey, there's a – Tackle like for a loss. Drop, drop for a loss. So uh, bring Mitch up Weber. third down and long for the Bobcats. And Mitch Weber was caught in the backfield, but I really didn't see who done was that uh, – Denzel Simmons that caught him in the backfield. I, I, I just really couldn't catch it. Um, Loss of two on the play brings up. But you know, right here, the Bulldogs the need Bobcats. to plant their feet and say, "Hey, you know, not this time. We're going to hold you another four and out." And uh, they got him at this point. So he's coming around the right side, and he shakes a couple of tackles. Denzel and Simmons made a good hit on him. As he's they're edging ever closer to that first down marker. And Dominique Walker made the tackle, and Denzel come in and finish it up. And bring up third, third four, we'll call it. This is a big play right here. Bulldogs need to really fight hard to keep this score to 28. Yeah. A handoff, and he's up left side, and I believe the Bulldogs have stopped him, so. That'll bring up fourth down for Thayer as they're going to send in the Man, look like the punt crew. So offered. big, big stop for the Bulldogs. So Yeah, Thayer's made a switch in the backfield. They took out their number 33 and put 42 in there. And, and the results are completely different from Jack and Alford just running for Thayer. That's going to give them a first down for Thayer. But that's going to get against the Bulldogs. Huge Let's mistake. See what they call it. Boy, that's just. Dead ball. Oh, man. Against the Bulldogs. Oh, boy, that is a costly, costly penalty. Penalty moves the ball five yards. Well, Jones forward, can't be happy about that one. The coach is really going to be upset. You know, I mean, yeah. here you. Defense stood up and held them. And it looked like they had to punt the ball, and you had that mental mistake. Yeah cost you huge. We we'll just hope it won't cost us yeah. six or seven points here. Well, you know, Thayer's looking to take advantage of it. They can give them a breath of new life. And, and uh, well, let's see what the Bulldogs can do here. As they run it straight up the middle and there's nothing that there. Was an excellent hit by Denzel Simmons coming in there. Yes, it was. See that running back the ball get up slower. Ball He's going to limp off the field because, man, that was a lick. Yeah. He goes to the sideline, goes to one knee. Wow. The Wildcats come back to the line under center. He's going to pitch to the left, and we've got a flag on the play. Yeah, whistle it dead. <laughs> Excuse me, no flag. Uh, Thayer calls timeout. They're going to call timeout. Time Thayer calls timeout. Time Thayer. Two minutes, nine seconds to go in here in the second quarter. Thayer 28, the Bulldogs 8. Well, the Bulldogs 
Mr. Rodney are really hanging tough. Uh, just just a few big plays have put the 28 points on the board for Thayer. Uh, been a one-man show up that left side. Uh, but the Bulldogs are hanging tough. Uh, you know. Now, Connor Blair has just put on a show here this first half of the game. And uh, he brought number 42 in to start taking the runs. And then Denzel hits him, takes him out of the game. And uh, it's... It's it's been impressive. The defense is finally yeah. stopping them a little bit here. Had right. momentum and then a minimal right. mistake as far as uh, getting off sides. End up getting right. the first down, or otherwise we'd have the ball right here. Yeah. Good field position with two minutes to go. Yeah. So. Well, when you look at it realistically, the Bulldogs have had more scoring opportunities. You know, they were in their territory and just weren't able to convert on some crucial third and fourth downs, leaving them fourth and long. They had to go to the deep pass with the one interception. But uh, – Bulldogs hanging tough, so after the timeout, they're going to go handoff up the right side, and he's going to go. And he's caught from behind. So Dominique Walker, Walker, number Dominic 33. Walker ran him down. Tackled by 22. Gain of about, we'll call it 40. I think you're right, Mike. I think he's over on the bench resting. He was a little windy. Yeah. They, he comes back in the game, and first thing he does hand off to him, and look how many yards he gained. Almost scored. My goodness. First and goal there from the 40 eight yard line. So it'll be first down there from the 40 eight. The handoff of that left side and they're, they're just walking right in. So with one minute, 41 seconds. 34 to eight. With the PAT yet to come, they are all reported to be. Well, the Bulldogs just got to suck it up, get tough here, and start uh, just keying on number 33 yeah. every time. Yeah, not feel the hole where he's going to go. Half. Up the right side and uh, my conversion is good. That'll make it 36 to 8. There. Hornets are going to have to make some kind of adjustment up that left side. Uh, I'm sure they'll just run it up the right side. Uh, well, they did that time on the two point conversion. You yeah. know, number 10 running in. This other side. Yeah. So I, I, we have no answer, just like our coaching staff has no answer for this one here. Yeah. You just have to stand here and hope kids, you know, play hard the rest well, of the game and, 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 and try to stay in it. And hopefully that they'll turn the ball over. There will, of course, turn the ball over. Yeah. And give you a few more opportunities. Uh, but whenever they're getting the ball, you know, they're going down the field. And, you know, all times, what, except for once or twice, they've scored. Yeah. Well, these kids are playing with pride, too. And uh, there's a whole other half of football to play. And, uh, you're just not going to see them give up. And it's, it's, it's a learning experience from them. They're playing against one of the better uh, football teams in the entire state of Missouri in our class. And uh, quality running back. I mean, just he comes right at you and fast. Just really, really fast. Deep kick. Back to Dominic Walker. He'll take it at about the five, and he's going to bring it straight up the middle. Dominic Walker around the right side. He's still on his feet. He cuts it back across the middle, and he's still on his feet. And we've got a Bulldog player down over here on this left side. Uh, but a good run from Dominic Walker. Excellent run for Dominic. Way to keep his feet moving. And broke it. numerous tackles that took three or four and bring him down. So. Dominique, good, good, good job showing, hey, he's still got pride. I'm playing for pride here, and you're going to have to really get on me and bring me down. Yeah. He took it straight up the middle right at him for about 35 yards. So. Looks like the player shaking up is number 10, Hunter Cook. He's been 10 to 2 on the sidelines. So hope everything works out all right for him. Portisville takes over first and 10. Wallace from the shotgun. He's going to pass it out to the right. Number 12, Ben Story. Ben Story is going to pick up about eight on pass the play. Completion number 12, Ben Story. It's completion to Story. With time running down here, a minute 13 left here in the first half. The 
the score would do a lot of a lot of reporting to his confidence here. Wallace once again comes from the shotgun. He's back to pass. He's going to pass, and the pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Ball is tip at the line of scrimmage. Pass is incomplete. Hargrove, Levi Hargrove, got a Bring hand up, knocked that ball down. For the Bulldogs. Good thing is it stopped the clock. Got one minute to go here in the second quarter. Yeah. Third down, we'll see if he's going to implement a running play here just to try to get a first down. We'll drop back to the well, pass. Back to pass. He's looking over his left. Number one, Jansen Darson. He airs it out and just overthrows him. Jansen was wide open. He had a two or three steps on yeah. the third the defender. Fourth and about two for just the Just led him just a little bit too much. Bring up a fourth and two for the Bulldogs. And I know they desperately like to run that 55 seconds off the clock. I don't know that they want to give their, the ball back with 55 seconds left here in the half the way they're moving the ball. They'll line it up from the shotgun. All this back pass, he's going to tuck it right up the middle, and I believe it'll be according to the spot. Looks like he's got the first down. Wallace on the quarterback keeper. They stopped the clock, so it looked like they're going to signal for a first down. Move the change. Looks like the side judge is, is motioning for the first. Oh, he he up deep. The first the down, first, down. Down. first and 10, Portageville. First and 10, right line. at midfield. Looks like they kind of got a mismatch on this left side. Looks like Jansen got five, six inches on this defender. The pass is thrown incomplete. Pass intended for Darsh is incomplete. Second down. Good pass. For the Bulldogs. Yes, it was. Bring up second down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Now you got to ask yourself, you know, 40 seconds when you go for that deep pass. But we know what we have, the fear of the deep pass is the yeah. interception. So yeah, just not a whole lot of confidence in that deep pass. But you're going to throw it here in a minute. Yeah. Wallace back to pass, and he's looking across the middle. He's going to tuck it, and he comes out around the left side. He's still looking to pass, and he's going to throw it out of bounds. Looks like that ball slipped out of his hand. You know, cool night like tonight, the hard to hang on that ball, and it looked like that one just slipped yeah. out. It went way wide, so. Yeah, do not far from falling either, and it's going to be, uh, that ball's going to get slick. Third 10 with, two thir with 32 seconds. Well, it's from the shotgun. He's going to hand it off at the left side, and looks like number 30. Hand off 32, Daniel Allen. Two. Is that the diesel? Yeah, that's the diesel the coming. The diesel's out of the shed. Oh, yeah, they just brought him out and take him up. They got the ether out and bring the diesel. We got a whole new look here. Hand off to Denzel Simmons up the right side, and he's going to power his way for the first down eventually. That should be enough for a first down, six With seconds. Six seconds left on the clock. Uh, if I'm pretty good, I think I take one shot deep at it. They're going to have to be quick on it and get on the ball because soon as the yeah, official first sets the ball and blows. He sets it, it's, it's, it's part of time. Line. Clock's going to start. Wallace from the shotgun. That's what they're doing. They're looking for the deep ball. And Wallace looking out to his left, and he's going to air it out. Didn't come out real good, but it's going to be tipped away by Thayer. So after one half of football, the Thayer Wild Bobcats, excuse me, lead the Portageville Bulldogs, 36 to eight. You can call them wild way they ran the ball the first half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, impressive first half by the Bobcats. Uh, we're gonna take a halftime break. You're watching Bulldog football on YHC TV. NFL Red Zone, the channel that brings you every touchdown from every game on Sunday afternoons. Watch the most exciting moments like never before, live in HD. Every touchdown from every game, live on one channel, NFL Red Zone. We welcome you back here to uh, high school football on YHC TV. 
Thanks to Mr. Tyler Wagner and his cameraman for coming over and so we can bring this broadcast to you. We've got a second half of football as the Thayer Bobcats lead the Portageville Bulldogs 36-8. to eight. Well, I don't know what kind of adjustments that uh, Coach Jones made in it at halftime, but he's going to have to make some defensive changes of some kind to stop them up. I don't know if he's going to – what he's going to do to do that. I mean, it's – it's just, you know, that they got a really strong line. It's pushing a big hole out, and they got a really quick back. And you just got to start keying on that back and, you know, I mean, take some kind of gamble to stop him. Right. Well, and you can look in the heart, at the heart of a team, Mr. Rodney, and you can look at the heart of an individual. But uh, I don't think down the score they were late in that second quarter that they looked back to Daniel Allen and said, you got to get in the game. I think you had a young man back there that says, I want to help my team. Put me in, and, uh, you know, his first run from scrimmage, he was very effective. And that and that just shows a lot of heart for a kid to do that on a cold night when he might be a little bit sore. And um, But uh, our hats are off to him and these guys. We know they're – hang in there, guys. We know you all are fighting hard, and we're, we're proud of you. All uh, oh, 100% behind them, you know. And, yeah. and like I said about Allen, I didn't think he was going to be capable to play the rest of the year. Right. And – here he is, you know, in this game here. He knows that this is, you know, he got a half a quarter uh, yeah. to play, and they got one more game, and it's done for the year. I yeah. mean, 2011 yeah. season will be behind us, yeah. and uh, they'll be looking forward to what they can put together next year. We, you know, we have Hay Tie next week, and they just read the halftime scores, you know, that Hay Tie's winning 22 12 over Kabul, and we got Hay Tie next week, so yeah, we'll look forward to that. Who knows what can happen? I mean, you know, last year. We were in this situation deep into the season, and uh, literally when I got to the ball game at Hayti, uh, I was informed, and it, and it may have been you, but some of the guys that are at the game that said, do you realize if we beat Hayti by this many points, we we get second in the district? And, I mean, I at the time I wasn't aware of that. So, you know, if you take a situation like where if uh, Hayti were to beat Kabul, that will give them one victory. If we could come in next week, uh, beat Hayti, I mean, you just don't know what will happen. Uh, well, and the positive thing coming from this game here, John, I mean, you, you've seen the best in this district, no doubt yeah. about it. So you've seen the best. So you know what the best is, and then after that, you know, you the game should slow down a little bit for you. You should be able to react a little bit better when we go to hay time and stuff. But, you know, the good thing here that what we're going to see, we're going to get the ball coming out this yeah. this half yeah. and see if the offense can get on the field and drive the ball. You know, show times had really good rhythm, and mm -hmm. you can see the t kids getting – more confidence in their play and show the weakness that Thayer has on the passing game. You know, Thayer's going to have to come against like Valley Catholic. If they win our district, which we know they will, and that's who they're going to end up playing. Yeah. And uh, it won't be the first play, you know, in the playoffs. It'll be the second game they play. So you're looking at four weeks out. That's who they're going to play. Right. And, yeah. and that shows their weakness. I mean, next coach yeah. over is going to say, hey, you know what? Boys will expose the problem we had. And that's in the passing game. Yeah. Well, as I went down to the concession stand there uh, at half, you know, uh, I had several people stop me, and it's like, man, you realize that if, you know, when we were deep there in their territory, if we scored on three more of those possessions, you look at what the score is. You, just, you know, so you're literally, we were 10 or 15 yards away from, from uh, pay dirt, so, you know, I mean, in which the Bulldogs haven't had trouble moving the ball all year and scoring points. It's just that, that defense has given up so many um, that it's – but. You know, the thing is, too, they're 64 118, if I'm right, in the, in the right. state of 64. Missouri. And we're playing the number eight ranked team. That's correct. And, uh, you know, play them, I feel like, halfway respectively. I mean, yeah, a couple of big plays, but the defense has made some big plays. Uh, they've shuttled down, you know, on, on, on hey, several you, possessions, called the fumble. Uh, yeah, you're, you're right, Big Mike, you know, on, on this uh, their team here. You know, they they was held out of the top ten most of the season. And then, and, as they kept playing, but you know, better, better, which we knew they were strong. What we seen last year, and what they had coming back, yeah. And they go and go down there to Haytide, really handle Haytide, knock Haytide out of the top ten. They moved to eight, which I think still that they would be higher ranked mm -hmm. in the state if they didn't have to run in Valley Catholic every time, yeah. because you know yeah. if you put them in another part of the state and they didn't have to run right into the next with well, the strongest district in the state, mm -hmm. you know, besides that, they would go further in the playoff. Yeah. And then, and you know, right off the bat, that's just like we were in basketball when Portage was so strong. You know, Rob State, if you, you're consistently going to state playoffs and you're getting up high, you're going to be ranked high. Yeah. And, you know, they, they're they a young team. 
and we're a young team. They got, you know, like five or six really good uh, seniors. But if you look overall what they got on the line, they're young. Yeah. So they got still up, and Forsberg's got a lot of up on what they have on offense because a lot of our offense is young kids that's going to be, you know, still developing this year. They're going to get stronger over the summer. Right. And they've learned a lot. You know, got lots, lots of playing time. Yeah. So you, you got to see this Forsberg team improving. Yeah. And there's the kick. He'll be back to number 22, Dominique Walker. He'll bring it up the left side, and he's going to be brought down. And the ball's loose, and it looks like it's going to bounce out of bounds there. So Forsberg retains that possession. Good, good hard run. Over first and ten at the 30. Good hard run, but Dominique Walker. Yes, if he got one more block out on that side. He missed the block here. I think he could have went on up for uh, a touchdown there because he was looking really good. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, too, Dominique down in your backs, you know, with running this spread offense, it's 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 a passing-oriented offense, and it's uh, – but they're being effective out of that backfield, and they're going to hand it off to Dominique right up that right side, and he's going to press forward for about five yards. Thirty-four, Craig on the tackle for the ball cap. Wallace will come back to the shotgun. Walker will fling him to the left side. Wallace sets up a little screen to Jansen Doris, and it'll be enough for a first down. And Jansen just like one tackle break, and it had been a touchdown. That's a screenplay we talked about earlier in the first half. That way they were really blitzing, coming forward, just you know, drop back, let them come, throw right over top of it, and just one tackle kept Jansen from making a huge gain on that. There's the pass out to Darson. He's got a few blockers, and Jansen Darson still on his feet as he's pressing forward close to another first down for the Bulldogs. Over we'll move it out right out to midfield. Gain of eight on the play, bringing the second down and two for the Bulldogs. Looks like Wallace looking for some of that senior leadership with Jansen Darson in receiver. He'll once again call it from the shotgun. Simmons in motion. He's going to hand it off to Simmons up that right side. He's going to be close to first down. Looks like it's right at the marker, Denzel. Almost a couple of yards for the Bulldogs. Like you said, I mean, the pursuit to the ball of their defense is excellent. I yeah. mean, they go, they see the ball, they run right after it. Yeah. You know, I, a double reverse or something like that, I think you might could catch them. But, yeah. you know, whether we do that, here we go with the Bryce Wallace running. Ralph He's Wallace will get it out of cross. Looks like it'll be enough for the first down. Move the chain across midfield for the Bulldogs. Wallace is slow to get up. Wallace on the quarterback keeper gets enough yards for the first down. First and 10, Portersville. First down for the Bulldogs. Wallace and trying to shake off. 43 yard line up there. The Bulldogs with a two back set. Looks like we got a flag. Looks like going to be flag movement. on the play. Encroachment possibly against the Bobcats. Dead ball. Right. Encroachment against, against the, Bobcats. the Bobcats. The guys getting a little bit too anxious there on the defense to yeah. come across. All sides. We'll, we'll take it. The now it's first five. Yards. five. And first the Bulldogs are moving the, Bulldogs. the ball really good. Moving the ball again. Wallace from shotgun. Dadley will call in the play from the sideline. They're going to hand it straight up the middle to Dominique Walker, and he's going to press forward for a couple of yards. Hand off to 28 Simmons. He is stopped by 36 Cabrales. That's Denzel Simmons running the ball there, but he was met right at the line. They moved big 36 in there to center on defense. And Trying to clog that hole in the middle. Wallace back screen. Screen. sets up that screen to Jansen Doris. Once again, he's able to pick up a couple yards. So. Pass complete to number one, Doris. Impressive drive here for the Bulldogs, but uh, every important a third play, one up third coming up. About two for the Bulldogs. Wallace will keep it, and he's going to be stacked up, and I don't know. 
Looks like he's be close. Get right back to the line of scrimmage is what it looks like he does. Well, you're going to go for it here with the position, field position you got. I don't see the Bulldogs punting the ball here. You got fourth and one or fourth and two. We'll try to get there to jump. They don't buy. Well, it's shot, John. No, nothing there. And Wallace on the keeper, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. And Thayer will take over on downs at about the 35 yard line. That's good Wallace penetration by the fair team to get in the Silver backfield. Down, first Big stand for them because the Bulldogs is really pressing forward. Let's see if the defense can make some adjustments over at their own the 36 yard line. There will come to the line with a two-back set. A pitch around the left side. He dropped, but... Good tackle by Denzel Simmons. Looked like he'd come with a high tackle there. Yes, it was. Nonetheless, enough to move the chain. It looked like the Bulldogs have got a backup quarterback woman up here on the sidelines. As Bryce Wallace is being tended to by the trainer over here on the sideline. Looks like maybe a knee strain or something. Bobcats come to the line right at midfield. They're going to pitch it up around that left side. And he's still on his feet. Still on his feet. I believe he's finally knocked out of bounds. Looks like a gain about 15. Gain of 15. 36 to the right of the ball carrier. Steps out of bounds. That's number 36, the big boy. We talked at the beginning of the game. So I guess he finally so start using him a little down. bit. This first and 10 there at the Portersville 35-yard line. Thayer's found something on that left side they like. Uh, possibly their lead blocker. Uh, but he's really making room for him up around that left side. All spotted on the 40. <laughs> Handoff once again up the left side. He's still on his feet. He'll pick up about eight. 33 is where the ball carrier. Tackled on the play by 22. Donnie Was Walker. that a good job that time bringing down Connor Blair because usually. When he gets the ball, it's about 30, if not 40, for a touchdown. Jane, uh, seven more play, makes it second down and three for the Bobcats. We got seven minutes and 30 seconds here in the third quarter. Off up the right side, and he's still on his feet. And he's going to be brought out of bounds by Dominique Walker. Looks like it'll be enough for a their first down. 37 children of the ball carrier is forced out of bounds. Gets enough yards in the first down. It's first and 10 there at the 42 19 yard line. First and 10 Bobcats, 42 19. There on the move, threatening to score. The pitch will be around that left side, and he's still on his feet. And touchdown! Touchdown, there. Number thirty-six to bounce the ball carrier. Touchdown, Bobcats. Well, we got two Bulldogs down. We'll get you a number for you, for you as quick as we can, folks. They're, they're, look like one of them making his way up. Yeah. Find out who that injured It's Dom Dominic Dominique Walker, Fred Moore, and Denzel Simmons all hit that back yeah. for Thayer really hard come off the field shaking their shoulders and still have a Dominic Walker down. Oh, 
Well, he's a load. You know, it, it, it shows him 6'2", 170, but there's no way my cadet kid only weighs 170 pounds. No. He's bigger than that. No. I know he's as big as the left side of me, and the left side of me is 170. So, I mean, come on now. I know be, he's a big kid, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, <laughs> they're fudging on their paperwork a little bit. Yeah. Well, as the coaches have continued to tend, we'd like to thank our sponsors for making tonight's game possible. Crop Production Services, one of the largest distribution network of agriculture products and services in southeast Missouri. CPS provides services including soil sampling and mapping, fall fertilizer and lime, custom application services, wheat seed and chemicals, Dynagro seed and LPI nutritional products. Crop Production Services has a knowledgeable staff providing agronomic solutions for all your remaining fall needs or to plan your spring. See Crop Production Services. If you take a nice look at the field tonight, you should be impressed as in great condition thanks to turf renovation. Turf Renovations is responsible for outstanding field surfaces and not only the field, but numerous ones in the area, such as Dexter, Sykeston, Piggott, and area baseball fields as well. Turf Renovation prides themselves on providing the best playing surface possible for the area's athletes. Special thanks to Turf Renovations. And to check out their projects, go to turfrenovations.com. Okay, our uh, injured player was... Dominic Walker. Dominic he's Walker. Up, he's up walking on side. He's up walking, folks. So we're glad to see that up under his own power is there will attempt the PAT. The place, the kick. And it's good. Extra point Seven minutes and three seconds left here in the third quarter. The Thayer Bobcats lead the Portageville Bulldogs 43 to 8. Well, about 10 more, they're going to hit that 53 uh, point that we thought they might get. But, uh, Go dogs, come on now! Yeah. Hopefully the Bulldogs' defense is going to start keying, I guess, on uh, Connor Blair, try yeah. to stop him. But he brought in the power run the, the last the time. Score. Yeah. Time now leads 30 to 12. That's good to see Dominique uh, still up on his feet there. Uh, He's been the long back carrying the load for the Bulldogs tonight. Is most of their action has been through there, and they've they moved the ball pretty well. Uh, just had some drive Peter out on them, but uh, still a lot of ball left here to play, and a lot of a lot of things to be learned here in the rest of this half of football. Well, you have to give a shout out to the cheerleaders too, because they're out here fighting this cold and still staying in the game, yelling, yeah. and screaming for their players. So. How about them girls? How about them girls? Got the pretty bow in their hair, and they've only had to do eight push-ups tonight, <laughs> unfortunately. So. Yeah. Well, they got kind of wore out the Eastbury game. Yeah. There's the kick, and we can kind of see who we got back, and he slips um, with number 32, and he's going to bring it around that left side. And he's still, still on his feet. feet. Still on his feet as he gained tackle at about the 25. 32, Daniel Allen. Daniel Allen after a gain of about 10. So once again, Bryce Wallace will lead that Bulldog offense back onto the field. Looks like he was able to get his one extended two there on the sideline and come back in to lead this Bulldog offense. Like Allen, he's a long back for the Bulldogs. The pass out to number one, James and Doris. And it's read properly by the Thayer defense as he's dropped for a loss of a couple. Pass complete to one, Doris. Jacob Alford, number 42 for Thayer. I've seen that play too many times tonight. As soon as he's seen uh, Jansen drop back that turn towards quarterback, he broke right towards yeah. him. Again, back to passing. He's looking up that left sideline. Number one, Jansen Dar. Complete to Jansen Dar. Jansen Dar still on his feet. 40, 30. And he's going to be caught up that sideline after a big gain for the Bulldogs as Bryce Wallace connects with Jansen Dar. So, about a 50 yard pass play for the Bulldogs. Well, the clock 
continues to run, so that would mean there's no flags, no whistles right after. So excellent job. Good, good spin move on that defender right there at the line of scrimmage by uh -oh. Darst to get himself to open. So the Bulldogs move it downfield. Lost power. Bear with us, folks. We're experiencing just a little bit of technical difficulty here. We're going to go ahead and give you some audio on this. Mm -hmm. Is uh, yeah. the Bulldogs handed up the left side uh, for a gain of a couple? Wallace once again from the shotgun. He's back looking to pass up that left side and intercepted, it's intercepted right at the goal line. Just bear with us, folks. Our there camera man. Died again. So after the interception, Thayer will take over first and ten. Deep, deep. Looks like they're on about the 10. They'll come to line. They'll pitch it out to the left. And he's brought down after a game of about three or four. Dominique Walker in on the stop for the Bulldogs. Sorry about the picture there. We having little problems with the camera. Hopefully we can keep you up to date with the audio folks here. As Thayer's got a second down and seven. And there's it's a, a hand little late handoff up the right side, and he's still on his feet. Dominique Walker in pursuit, and he's going to bring him down right at midfield at about the 50. Number 33. Connor Blair. Connor for Blair for Thayer. First and 10 at their own 48 yard line for there. Just bear with us, folks. We'll get it back to you as soon as possible. There it comes to the ball. Line up on the ball. Quarterback comes set. It's a quick pitch out to the left. He cuts back through the middle. Bulldogs continue to tackle. Looks like a gain of six. Crosses midfield. Pretty good pursuit by that Portage, that Bulldog defense, but that uh, Thayer line just making some big holes for them to, to run through. He's going to bring up second. Two for Thayer. I think we're back with you, folks. I hope you didn't miss us. Sorry about those. Technical difficulties, but we're right back here to action as Thayer moves it across midfield to the 45, and they're going to hand it off right up the middle. And he's still on his feet. 36 to balance the ball carrier once again. 30 Fred Moore Rollis, on the tackle uh, for the Bulldogs. Gets a first down, then the power run game has started for Thayer. They just to continue to drive. We have one minute and 28 seconds left in the third quarter, 43 to 8. There you come up to the line. It's going to be a handoff right up the right side. And he's going to be stacked up after a gain of about. We'll give him three. Jacob Cook in on the tackle for the Jacob Bulldogs. Jacob Cook in on the stop for the Bulldogs. Looks like Jacob Cook, number 50, and 38, Hunter Ivy on the stop. And a five on the play, makes it second down and five for the Bobcats. Man, he is a power runner. Yes, he is. I mean, you got the quick speed with 33. Yeah. You know, Connor Blair, then you take 36. 
with the power run. So. That's a versatile package they've got in that backfield. They'll bring it to the line. And they're going to hand it off, and he's going to go right off right tackle, and he's still on his feet. He's going to be stopped right so near first down here. territory, and it is the first down there. 15, 14 seconds left here in this third quarter. Thayer leads Portageville 43 to 8. The first and 10 there at the Portageville 19 yard line. Time will expire here in this third quarter. You're watching YHC TV. special privileges for our friends who are age 50 or better and have combined deposits of $5,000. Members enjoy trips, cruises, seminars, and picnics along with free personalized bank services. Upcoming trips include Journey Through the Holy Land, Yellowstone in Winter, Classic Ireland, and Hawaiian Paradise Cruise. Stop by any First Midwest Bank location to sign up for the Gold Club. It's absolutely free. First Midwest Bank, providing common sense financial solutions every day. We welcome you back to the Vic Reeves Athletic Field here in Portageville as we begin the first quarter, fourth quarter, excuse me, as they are driving into Portageville territory with a first down and 10. And they're going to pitch it. He's going to run right up that right side, and he's still on his feet. He's going to be up near first down territory. Bring up a second down yeah, and one. Nine on the play, but it's a second down and one. That's a good tackle there. by Fred Moore there. Looked like he was going to break free and score another touchdown, but he didn't get eight out of it. But uh, they stopped him for the first down. Stanger will bring it back to the line. <laughs> Hand off at the left side. Hey, looks like a good catch there on him. Yep. Like number 44 landed the lay line on the stop the along carrier, with number 38 Hunter Ivy. For the in on the stop. That looked like the first time tonight during this game they really attacked him when he seemed like he was going to hand the ball and, and close, shut down that run to the outside and cl also close any gaps in the middle on him. Yeah. Looks like it's taking the defense and the coaches just a little while to to figure out how to shut it down, but they are slowing this Thayer offense is they're going to run it up the right side, and he's going to cut it back to the middle, and he's going to be, I believe he's Hand in for the touchdown. Player, touchdown, Bobcats. Touchdown, Thayer. With 10.32 left here in the fourth quarter. Thayer strikes pay dirt again as they're going to line up in that offset formation and then they'll bring it up and line it up for the kick they'll try to make it 50 to 8 snap and there's a flag on the play looks like one of the Bulldogs jumped flag on the play offsides against the Bulldogs well, let's see what they're going to do. I'm sure they're still going to kick the bar, decline, just go ahead and kick it from where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to decline. Yeah, yeah. The yeah you get it too close decline. here, and it's, it's a disadvantage. <laughs> and snap, place, and kick, and it's good. So with 10.32 here left in the fourth quarter, the Thayer Bobcats lead the Portageville Bulldogs 50-8. 
we'd like to send a shout out to our sponsors. We'd like to thank Miss Virginia Hitchcock down at Western Auto. She's on Main Street in Portageville. She's helped sponsor tonight's game. Miss Virginia has been serving area residents for many years with appliances, TVs, hardware, household essentials are also provided at Western Auto with great customer service. Also services given for all products. Give them a visit at 300 East Main and Portageville or call 379-3821. If you need some auto parts, stop by Delta Auto Parts and Salvage on Highway 61 North in Portageville. They specialize in domestic car and light truck parts. Go to DeltaAutoParts.com for parts information. Dr. James Deere is in dentistry at 205 East 4th Street here in Portageville. Dr. Deere has been serving Portageville and the surrounding area since 1995. Has a newly remodeled facility. All porcelain crown and bridge work is metal free and tooth color composite fillings are now available. Dr. Deere's office offers payment options through care credit for patients to finance treatment. To schedule an appointment, call 379-5407. Thank you to Dr. Deere and all our fine sponsors. Well, Big Mike, one thing good, good about this fourth quarter is the Mercy Clock should start. Yeah, deep kick. Dominique Walker will take it on about the goal line. And he's going to bring it up the right side. He's met by a swarm of fair defenders. 22, Walker on the return. So the Bulldogs will set up camp from about close to the 20. First down and 10. 81, Isaiah well, this, this quarter should go really, really fast. The, the clock yeah. shouldn't stop at any time. Unless their injury or a timeout is called. So. Yeah. Well, the, the Bobcats have just shown why they're ranked number eight in the state. Uh, they do things right, and just a little more than Port of to handle tonight as there's a pass complete. Pass across the middle. The ball is to Simmons. Good pass. And 28, Denzel Simmons on the reception. To move the chain for the Bulldogs. First and down. First and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 30 yard line. Move it, move it, move it. Snap back to Wallace, and he's going to air it out down the sideline, and it's thrown out of bounds. Bring up a second down and ten. Go dogs, come on now. Wallace will call the play from the shotgun. He's back to pass and he's got a receiver number twelve, Ben Story, and he's Catch is complete, and he'll be tackled at the about the line of scrimmage. Pass complete to number 12, Story. Well, it's going to bring up third and 11, and you needed to really to cut this in half right now. I mean, you, you need to cut about five yards out of this. That way, the fourth down just not so far. Yeah, that's that's what's hurt Portageville on the offensive side of the ball tonight, is being able to pick up that third down and be. He's going to air it out down the sideline. And it'll fall incomplete for number 12, number 12 Ben Story. Well, ben Story did a good job time, that time becoming a defender because it looked like close that Thayer was going to intercept that ball. He yeah, put his like, hands on him and uh, officials let it go. Yeah, it looked like Thayer had a little better play on the ball than the Bulldog receiver did that time. So, so it's going to be fourth down. We've got seven minutes and 55 seconds here to go. Fourth quarter. Few substitutions in for the Bulldogs. <laughs> Back to punt. And Hunter Ivy is a good punt. Send it over around midfield, and as the ball is loose, there is the third defender dropped it, but nonetheless, there will take over first down and 10 from about the 37. The A 
Hope you folks are enjoying the, tonight's broadcast. Fair takes over thanks for all our sponsors and thanks for YHC making this possible. Looks like the third coach makes substitutions in the backfield. He's going to take out the, his two star back with six minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. off up around the right side and yeah, he's still on his feet with a gain of about 13. 26. I couldn't even see who made that tackle. No, if when they get on that far side of the field with the lights and everything, it's kind of hard to see folks. We hope you've got a good picture. It really looks clear here. So we, uh, Hopefully you see, folks can see some of the things we're not able to to bring to you audibly, but uh, Thayer will come to the line with a fresh set of downs, first and 10 from right at midfield. And the handoff's gonna be up the left side, and he's gonna be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Got a host of Bulldogs host in on that tackle. Like Jacob Cook getting up. Like Jacob Cook, Lawton Wilson. Uh, 24. 64, the tackle for the Bulldogs. Not sure who. It's like a loss second of two for the Bulldogs. I got second and 11. And he's caught in the backfield on a. Looks like they might have been trying to run a little Number option play. On the quarterback keeper, tackled by it was snipped out Cook. quick by the Bulldogs. Jacob Cook Lost did an excellent job. It just shows you how strong the other two running backs are. You know, they got quick. Jacob got a hold of him. Yeah. And, uh, and before they just been running around and through is like no problem. Yeah. Let's go bring up a long third down here for third down and twelve. See if the they're going to try to pass the ball or if they're going to be content to run it. Quarterback keeper. Mm -hmm. Go up around that right side and doesn't look like he got Seven much at all. On the quarterback keeper. Looks like the Bulldogs will be sending in some substitutions. Anderson on the tackle. Is that fourth down and nine for the Bobcats? Fourth down and nine, it looks like Thayer's going to line up and go for it. They're just across midfield, and they're going to hand it off, and he's still on his feet fighting, and it's going to be awful close. To it's going to be a first down. First down there. That was a big time uh, push. Like number 70 in for the Bulldogs. Uh, is that Jake Bracey? Nathan Mercer. Nathan Mercer. Mm -hmm. 26 picks up enough yards for the first down. It's first and 10 there. At the 40-38 yard line. We will have a first and 10 at the 40-38. We'll bring it up to the line of scrimmage. There's a handoff up the left side, and he breaks a couple of tackles. He's still on his feet. He's going to be close to his first down territory again. Twenty-seven. Aaron Honeycutt, the ball carrier. Bring up a second down and two for the Bobcats. They got about nine on the play. Right at second down and one. That's your gang of about nine. Handoff straight up the middle. And looks like he's got enough for the first down. Handoff straight up the middle is enough for a first down for the Bobcats. Got two first minutes and, and there. 30 seconds here in the fourth quarter as the Mercy Cox continues to run. At the Portiesville 23 yard line. Like 
Okay, I thought it was going to be a timeout, but it looks like they're going to go ahead and run a play. And they run it right up the middle. We got Aaron Honeycutt Honey got, got the call now to start running the ball for Hunt there. Up the middle. Second down and seven for the Bobcats. Bring up seven, second down and seven for there. Off up left side, and he's met in the backfield. Looks like uh, 24 Carlos McGee on the Carlos McGee on the stop. We run down to just over a minute left to play here in the fourth quarter. Carlos McGee, he's a 10th grader, and he really exploded across the line there and made a good tackle. Yes, so, he did. I mean, right now, Ronnie's got a lot of the younger kids in here playing the game. It's kind of got out of hand here, giving them a little bit of experience. Yeah. Because he was like to play against a real good team. There's a handoff up that right side, and he's still on his feet. And he's going to be play. close to first down territory. The clock continues to run. Well, I'll say that. The clock is stopped. They're going to be a flag uh, holding on there, so they're going to stop there. and back them up 10. Holding against the Bobcats. I thought Honeycutt was fixing a break for a touchdown on that one. I he did, too. He, he's not a very big kid, but he's pretty fast and uh, looks like he's a little elusive. I imagine he's happy. He's a senior. And he's happy he's getting some playing time in the backfield. But, yeah. but the other two there, it, it's probably hard Holden to get a little playing time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd say practices are slim for those, that young man with those <laughs> two starting back stairs running. But, hey, he's in there now, and the lights are shining on him. Now. You can't tell that young man nothing. Just give me the ball. And he'll be met in the backfield. Tyler Burks. Like yeah, Tyler Burks in on the stop. Honeycutt. We wind down to 20 seconds. Tyler Burks for the left in the contest. Looks like Ferris is going to let the clock run out here. They don't have to snap the ball or nothing. No. It's going to end 15. Going to end for there up. and 8 for Portsville. There's Mr. Rodney says That'll, that's going to be your final. This time will expire here at the Victory's Athletic Field. Here in the Portage Young Girl. the ball game there, 50, Portageville 8. Remember, there's FCA. We'd like to thank our sponsors that have made this game possible. Uh, Agnes Rivers in Portageville, located in Portageville at Highway T. They have seven ADI agronomy locations. They offer seed, fertilizer, crop protection services, and custom application services. Stop by the Portageville Farm and Home Store for a large selection of home, lawn, lawn and garden supplies, hardware, clothing, etc. Go to adiagronomy.com or call 379-3816. Like to We'd like to say thanks to Butler Drugstore on Main Street in Portageville is your local full service pharmacy. Go see Mr. Trey Rohn for all of your services you need, including gifts and fine jewelry that Miss Valerie can fix you up with. Dr. Trey has been serving the area for many years and provides your prescription solution. Butler Drugstore at 222 East Main in Portageville. Call 379-5469. Go down and see Mark Givens at Ellington Insurance and his fine staff there in Portageville. They have all your insurance needs. Ellington's offering a chance to win a 25 Ford Yeti Roly Cooler. Go to their Facebook page online and like it for them for a chance to win. Ellington Insurance in Portageville. Visit their website at ellingtoninsurance.com. A-plus Family Clinic in Portageville has been serving the area with medical services with great quality and service. Visit them at 203 East 3rd Street. Or call 379-2400 for an appointment. Go down and see Miss Lauren at A-Plus Family Clinic in Portageville for all your medical solutions. Crop Production Services is one of the largest distribution network of agriculture products and services in southeast Missouri. CPS provides services including soil sampling, mapping, fall fertilizer and lime, custom application services, wheat seed and chemical, and Dynagrow seed and LPI nutritional products. Crop Production Service has a knowledgeable staff providing agronomic solutions for all your remaining fall needs or your plan for your spring. See Crop Production Services. 
We'll be back with the post game in just a few moments. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glen Sane. We realize the best advertising we have is when our customers tell them about their buying experience at Glen Sane with price and service. We have an outstanding service and parts department that I think you'll be very, very proud of. Every day we come to work and look forward to selling our next GMC truck and have been doing so ever since my late grandfather, Glenn Sane, started the business in 1954. We invite you to come and see us and see why so many are buying from us. And God bless our troops. Hello, I'm Dr. Terry Swinger, and I'm so pleased that YHCTV will be carrying so many sporting events this year, both boys and girls. These events help with leadership, uh, personality development, and I would like to wish all of our students and all of our schools a safe and successful year. At Allen Christian and Dexter, you'll like the way we do business for many reasons. We make the buying experience simple with a large selection of Buicks and GMCs to choose from. We offer quality pre-owned vehicles priced to fit any budget. No gimmicks, guaranteed. Shop us any day, anytime, here in Dexter or online at allenchristian.com. We service what we sell with one of the most experienced service departments in the Heartland area. Selection, price, experience, family owned for over 53 years. Allen Christian, Buick, GMC, Dexter. Mr. Rodney, we wrap things up here tonight at Portageville as uh, the Thayer Bobcats beat the Portageville Bulldogs 50 to 8, and uh, very impressive performance uh, performance by Thayer. Uh, he saw a lot of heart and a lot of try on the Bulldogs. They were just outmatched by the number eight team in the state tonight. Well, I mean, it's no surprise. Just like we said at the beginning of the game, looked like the Thayer, when well, the numbers were stacked up, they're going to score 53 points. They got, you know, right there within three. And the only thing different we've seen, we've seen that one of the other kids step up and really make big plays, and, and we had no answer for him at all tonight. Uh, defense tried to stop him and tried several different things, but, you know, hey, there's going to come times when you're just against another team that's got a lot more talent, a lot more athletes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Portageville's had their day, um, you know, and it's and it's Thayer's day. They've, they've got a, a one of the elite programs in the state right now, and uh, they'll have some exciting football to come. There's some other really, really great – 1A football teams in the state and Portageville will uh, they'll start out Monday morning have a hard week of practice and look to the end of the season to close it out with Haytai with their last final district game of the year. Well it shows these young kids on the Portageville team where we need to be you know it shows right now you know where you're at and now you see a team that's going to win the district you know and has won the district pretty much by winning tonight and it'll be uh, Thayer and Haytai is going to walk off to, and end up into the state playoffs out of this district. And so our kids can look and say, this is where we need to be and reach that goal and try to work into that next year and start off with a positive season next year. You're right. It, it was a tough night for the Bulldogs, but they got to see that, you know, hey, you know, it is possible uh, with uh, uh, hard work and get all, get everything going right for you. And uh, you can see what it produced for Thayer. So they know what can be done. Uh, and uh, like I say, there's some young kids out there with a lot of potential. We got some upperclassmen that show tons of heart, and uh, it just, uh, you know, they were just outmatched any way you look at it tonight. Well, well this is one of them films, films that the coach is going to take and just throw in the trash. You know, yeah. I mean, we're going to go to uh, – Haytown's going to come here to Portsville next week, and, you know, they've, they've already pretty much clinched their spot as far as the district by beating Kabul, and uh, hopefully our kids will show up and put on a good game there with Haytown. That's exactly right. We hope you folks enjoyed the broadcast tonight, and uh, we'll be seeing you and bringing you the game uh, with Portageville and Haytown next week. So from Portageville, Missouri, I'm Mike Wilson. This is Mr. Rodney Ivey, and uh, we hope you enjoyed this broadcast, and we hope you all have a good evening.